Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with a couple more sort of Valentine's cards, but not really, <laughs> as is the theme with all of my Valentine series. So anywho, I started off with a background stamp, which when I went to link, this one is no longer available. My apologies. However, any sort of geometric background stamp will work. I'll link to some other ones that if I hadn't had this one, I would have reached for one of those ones. So I'll link to some other options. Um, Cause yeah, just geometric patterns. I've said this in a lot of my videos. I love geometric background stamps because they just go with like anything. So I had the stamp face up on my work surface. I inked it up with salvage patina distress oxide ink. I didn't ink it up evenly on purpose. I'm just like tapping ink pad. You know, I'm not worried about getting even coverage. I just wanted some pattern on the background. And actually you could also use a, like a stencil, any sort of like geometric stencil would also work. Just something to create a little bit of a pattern. So inked up the stamp, pressed a piece of A2 sized white cardstock. So four and a quarter by five and a half, which I applied on an angle. Cause again, perfection is overrated, but these backgrounds, I want to be a little bit yeah, just a little bit messy, a little bit, of, a little bit of texture, a little bit of like a geometric pattern. I'm then going to spray these backgrounds with Salvage Patina Distress Oxide Spray. The spray I'd shaken up really well before I filmed. This is something I picked up from Nicole Spore's card making videos. Love her videos. Love her cards. Oh, chef's kiss. Amazing. Seriously, the amount of like thing, I could just copy her all day. But anyway... <laughs> She was doing, she started doing this forever ago and I'd picked up on it. I did it. A, I've done it a couple times and I just, I don't know, using like a stamp or a stencil and then spraying it with the same color of oxide spray. Just, I just love the look of it. And I'd forgotten about it for a bit. And then when I did it here again, I was like, oh, I might have to do this on like every single card from now. On. <laughs> so anywho, sprayed those with the spray, set them aside. Then I wanted to do some ink blending. So I've just got my tonic uh, media grip, like the Tim Holtz media grip. I'll have a link to that in the supplies. I like using that. Um, I put it on my glass surface and then I either put, you know, my uh, grid paper or whatever cardstock. I've shown it to like line up die cuts in my previous video, things like that. It just keeps things from sliding around. So I just have that same scrap grid paper there and a couple pieces of white cardstock. And I'm just doing a really quick an easy blend with three dis different distress inks in different shades of green. My three favorite greens, uh, Twisted Citron, Mowed Lawn, and Rustic Wilderness. Just going from lightest to darkest with a blending brush. Again, simple. Not worried about getting a good blend, anything like that, because none of that's going to matter. I just wanted color laid down on these pieces, and then I'm going to splatter them with water. So since I'm using just water, I wasn't worried about you know, getting it out because again, if you guys watch my videos, you know, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I'm really bad about splattering without using my splat box. And then I always whine and complain about it. And you guys know, anyway, when it's just water though, no biggie. So I use my fan brush to splatter the water first, just because then I got all those different sizes of blotchies. And then I wanted to add even more. So I used a uh, mowed lawn, smush that on my work surface and added a little bit of water. This time I'm using my splat box, so I'm not getting green splatter absolutely everywhere. And then I wanted even more um, like obvious green little splotchies. So I took the rustic wilderness, smushed that onto my glasswork surface, added a bit of water and splattered that on these backgrounds. You could totally skip this and just use green cardstock. You know, I just, I was just in the mood, like I was just in a very much like play with my inks and texture and I don't know. I, I say this though with every card. It's like, I had so much fun making this. I, I have fun making every card. <laughs> don't know how else to say it, but I did. This was a fun process. So I did all those things. I die cut those green panels with the tropical leaf bunch wafer dye. I can't even tell you guys. I had it pulled out to use with this uh, Milo Toucan wafer dye that I showed in a release and review video. This came out in December. I think this is part of Simon's Hugs release. Anyway, I remembered that I had that tropical leaf bunch and then I pulled it out to like make these cards and I set it somewhere. And of course, do you ever think I remember? I can't even tell you how long I and how many things I had to go through till I finally found it right under my nose. Anyway, anyway, Milo Toucan, he's adorable. 
love him to pieces and you guys also are aware and i've said this i love all of simon's like bird wafer dyes because they're just cute and i'm making a conscious effort to stop hoarding them and actually like die cut things and put them on cards got to put a bird on it so that's what i'm doing i'm using my little mini die cut machine here this one's the honeybee one i'll link to a couple other ones i i have more than one of course i have the little gemini one and hero arts has one and this honeybee one and any little die cut machine is kind of a must-have it's one of those things where i thought for years i was just like really really you know trust me it, they're little workhorses i use them so much because when you're doing like lots of little bitty pieces or multiple pieces of small wafer dies those sorts of things why use the big machine that takes longer to run through you know little mini machines wonderful so that's what i did i die cut all my little pieces and this is also why i save all my scraps because i do you know all sorts of little die cuts things like that so i keep all my scraps because they come in handy so i die cut all the pieces to make a couple of these little guys super simple to assemble because there's a wafer die that die cuts just the base and then you just adhere all the little pieces to it and they they just they fit like puzzle them right in you just follow the packaging and he's done that's another reason I think I, you know, I would for I would just avoid using bird wafer dies because it was like, oh, they're they're difficult to put together. Like you have to think more. <laughs> no, not with like I have yet to come across one that's like difficult. It's another one of those things. Just like some of the other more complicated um, die cutting and stuff I've shown. Once you actually like lay out the pieces and actually die cut them, it's like, oh, this is so simple. Why did I overthink this? So anyway. I assembled my little toucans, set them aside. I pulled out another scrap of black cardstock and I'm using some little companion sentiments from the CZ Design uh, Hi There Greetings. This is from the new release, the Simon Says Stamp Kisses release. And I used my anti-static powder tool on that black cardstock and I stamped the little companion sentiments a couple times with uh, clear embossing ink, used my detail white embossing powder melted that with my heat tool once those are smooth and melted i am going to die cut those with the smallest of simon's sentiment labels wafer dies use my microfiber cloth to wipe off the excess um, anti-static powder and then i'm going to use those wafer dies to die cut the sentiments again this is where little little die cut machines come in so handy because i got to do it multiple times so i just take my little washi tape tape these across i've also shown videos like some just it depends on my mood sometimes i'll just um like eyeball it and use like my guillotine trimmer that sort of a thing but the wafer dies just make life easier and as i get older i'm getting way worse at like being able to eyeball things that used to be my superpower back in the day you know i could just eyeball just about anything you know get it straight da 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 da, da. nowadays i'm like you know <laughs> I need the T-square rulers and the grid lines and the misties and all the things to help me. Just help me be the best that I can be. So anyway, after I did that die cutting, I die cut several scraps of doll pink cardstock as well as some, is it flamingo pink? Yeah, flamingo glitter cardstock. Oh. I was so, uh, yeah, I was flipping through all my sheets of Simon's glitter cards because there's like a bajillion colors. This one jumped out at me and I was like, yep, sentiment's going to be hot pink because I just love it. So I stacked the sentiments, top layer being that glitter cardstock, and that was the Love Ya CZ Design wafer die that I used. In my last video, if this uploads at this, you know, my upload schedule is all over the place as usual, but used it in a previous video. Absolutely love it. So I used just the words for that one and didn't use the outline. And then on the inside of these cards, these are going to be top folding A2 white note cards. I used another sentiment from that same CZ Design Hi There Greetings stamp set, the thanks sentiment. And I'm stamping that with Simon's Sweets uh, Positively Saturated Ink. And this is where these are not technically Valentine cards, but you could just switch up the sentiments. The front works like, and then the inside, you could just put like happy Valentine's Day if you wanted it to be specifically Valentine's or more lovey-dovey or whatever. These I turned more into kind of a thank you theme card. So that's what I like. And like I always say with my Valentine's cards, because you only need so many actual Valentine's, but 
for whatever reason, I love creating with the heart theme, Valentine sort of theme, but then making it more open-ended, more any occasion in a sense. So insides were stamped. I added a little companion sentiment. The card fronts that I stamped at the beginning and sprayed, I ended up, I wasn't going to do this, but then things just took on a mind of their own. I used the largest of the nested round hearts wafer die and die cut a large heart from the center of these. At first, I was just going to use just the heart. Like I was going to die cut it from the backgrounds and then use the heart and have a white card base, you know. But then I decided instead to adhere the card front to my card bases. So I just used craft tacky glue. And then you can do one of two things. You can cut scraps of cardstock to stack underneath the die cut heart or... I cut some craft foam with that same heart wafer die to, to, to pop it up. Or you could pop it up with dimensionals, you know, whatever floats your boat. Um, as I was grabbing some of my larger cardstock scraps, I had all these pieces of craft foam sitting there and I was like, ooh, perfect. I can add the dimension and it doesn't add the weight of cardstock. So adhered the hearts to the craft foam die cuts. Once those are adhered, I'm going to then um, inlay those into place in the opening. So the pattern stays consistent. You know, the pattern, the splatter stays consistent, but the hearts are popped up. And then I just stick them under my misty to hold everything flat while that glue dries. And yeah, yeah, it just, it was just an extra little thing. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad I thought to do this. <laughs> So once those are adhered into place, now we're going to start assembling all these different elements to make the cards. So those tropical leaf bunch wafer dies, the bottom parts of those leaves kind of hang over the hearts. So I put just some little foam squares behind those and then just use craft tacky glue on the rest of them. Just little dots here and there so I can adhere those into place. Once I got those adhered, uh, my little toucans will get adhered. So they're kind of, you know, sitting a month sitting amongst the little tropical leaves this was why I had to like pull out this leaf wafer die because this came out was it last year I forget when it came out I used it before in a video this isn't the, and it's funny because that's not a type of wafer die like that I would reach for very often and yet it was just perfect and I love when you know I find my random supplies <laughs> and then you know make more use of them so I got those adhered I adhered my little toucan I adhered the lovia sentiment once I've got all those in place same thing I just set it under my misty so that it does the work of just holding everything down you know let that glue dry once I have those adhered into place I can then adhere the little companion sentiments that I had white heat embossed so the front will say always know I love ya and on the inside it says thanks for everything you know so Definitely not Valentine's Day, but Valentine's adjacent. <laughs> so after I did that, off camera, and I've talked about this in recent videos, I had used the little leftover bits of the glitter paper and the doll pink cardstock, and I die cut those with uh, my little mini hearts wafer dies. You know, little, little heart wafer dies, little stars, all sorts of things. Great way to use those tiny little random scraps, especially of specialty papers, you know, and make little custom embellishments and all the extra ones sitting there like I always say I throw them right back in the package with the wafer dies next time I pull this out I now have a plethora of little hearts to add to whatever project I want to do so I adhered those into place with the craft tacky glue and then I decided to adhere a couple uh little you know sparkly heart to the insides of the cards as well once those are adhered I'm going to pair these with some dull pink envelopes and that's going to finish off these cards so like I mentioned in the beginning, that one background stamp's not available, but I will have other options that you guys can check out if you're interested. I'll have a link below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, there's pictures, there's picture links to find everything if you're interested. All of that info will be directly below the video in the description box, so you can check that out. Um, as always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos. Thumbs upping, commenting helps a ton. Subscribe if you haven't. I'd very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.